The National Freedom Party in Parliament says it strongly condemns President Saul Ramaphosa's decision to establish a commission of inquiry into the alleged supply of weapons to Russia. Now, the NFP parliamentary leader, Ahmed Sheikh Imam, says that the inquiry will be a waste of taxpayers' money, which will serve no purpose but to satisfy the foreign powers. Sheikh Imam says that Ramaphosa's decision is misguided and lacks rationale. Well, this comes after U.S. Ambassador Ruben Brigitte uh, claimed that South African, uh, South Africa rather provided the ammunition through Russia's Lady R ship that docked at the Simonstown Naval Base in Cape Town in December of last year. The International Relations and Cooperation Department claims that Brigitte has since apologized unreservedly for his utterances. So we look further into the standoff, the impact that a fallout would have to both countries. For this, we're going to be joined via Zoom by Loisi Somia, International Relations Analyst. Loisi, good afternoon. Thanks for your time here with us in the SABC. Thank you so much, Lizo. I think it's just important to contextualize this conversation. For those who are not privy to the uh, rules and regulations around a GOA, perhaps how it's also mutual, mutually beneficial for both countries. Perhaps you could walk us through that, the United States Trade Act, AGOA, in the Southern African region, and how the two countries at this point have been benefiting from it. So AGOA is a means by the U.S. Congress at facilitating low tariff entry points with, within the U.S. markets of African states. And this is preferential treatment um, outside of the usual tariff arrangements the U.S. government usually has. Um, all these extradition tariffs and all, all, all the other tax-related um, uh, incomes the U.S. government you would usually have in terms of importation of, of these African goods will be avoided through the ACOA um, uh, um, uh, Act. But now what has happened is that the U.S. has, has stuck to um, um, uh, conditions towards uh, receiving a go, uh, which includes not impeding in U.S. foreign policy interests. Uh, South Africa, um, as a non-aligned member of of, um, um, of the international community, now has placed in a very tricky situation where it has to balance out not only its national interests in terms of its BRICS relationships with Russia, but also now that America perceives Russia as an existential threat to its national interests, uh, South Africa is now met in the firing line um, um, uh, due to the positionality uh, that we have taken in the international system. However, there have been critiques concerning the American positioning uh, where, where, where they plan to dictate the foreign policy positioning of African states and uh, states in the global south, uh, which hops on, on critiques around new imperialistic inclinations of U.S. foreign policy. Um, and, and, and those critiques are now being uh, perpetuated through the latest uh, events and, and, and threats around the removal of AGOA due to the current conflict emerging in Europe. Mm. Lozi, because AGOA is, is up for um, renewal at this point, um, it's also important to, to uh, in terms of what you mentioned about how um, ASA has somewhat been caught up in the crossfire um, given the geopolitical dynamics that are unfolding. So, so in view of what is transpiring, is this likely to fracture the, the trust and the relationship of the two countries as we speak? Um, between South Africa and the USA, it is, uh, as, as the press conference was saying, that it is a very, very important and strategic relationship that South Africa has with the USA. And similar, uh, they ha there is a very historic and strategic relationship South Africa also has with Russia. Um, and, and balancing out, and this is why South Africa, uh, from the early goings of its democracy, chose a non-aligned position um, due to the mere fact that uh, mm -hmm. there are, they are contending powers within the international geopolitical system that we need to work with on a day-to-day -day basis in order for, number one, one, to 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 to, to salvage our national interests, and we're going to build people to people solidarity, and number three, to enhance trade relations and economic cohesion within the international system. However, what has happened with the tensions building up as a result of the Russia-Ukraine war is, is that the, the West has taken an a zero-sum game towards um, uh, relations amongst people. However, this has also been, uh, South Africa's foreign policy positioning on non-alignment has also been undercut by issues such as the naval exercises that were carried out on the one-year anniversary of uh, uh, the Russia's invasion of Ukraine, um, along with other, uh, uh, these latest allegations proposed, uh, purported by um, the ambassador, uh, the U.S. ambassador to South Africa, Ambassador Pugeti. But, but at the same time, 
Um, as Ambassador, um, um, Ambassador Director General Zain Dang has mentioned, the U.S. counterparts have provided no evidence um, on their side concerning this information, except for the two instances this was raised previously, one at the envoy level and the other time at uh, um, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen's visit to South Africa. So this all creates a, a very confusing situation where the U.S. makes pro uh, public pronouncements concerning intelligence matters that were not rung up through South Africa's diplomatic channels. and and then number two, that the U.S. ambassador holds a press conference a week after engagements with South Africa's envoy without um, uh, asking the South African government on the way forward concerning those prior engagements. Yeah. And this is why there has been a lot of uh, clapback, uh, especially from the diplomatic circles um, um, concerning the approach that the U.S. ambassador has taken uh, to address these concerns that he has concerning the, the, the Simonstown uh, Lady R uh, situation. Loisy. The, the, as you mentioned, there was a lack of empirical evidence to date. And, you know, some of the view that the U.S. undermined the sovereignty of South Africa. After the allegations from the U.S. ambassador to South Africa, the U.S. did not retract its statement, but they gave an apology somewhat, which doesn't really clear the allegations in view of the world and what, um, you know, has been put forth. What is your take on the intention here? So, so if if you look at it very carefully, the U.S. ambassador uh, only apologized for the ma the process that they had undertaken, and meaning the megaphone diplomacy uh, that they through the press conference of, of, of uh, instead of bringing it up the diplomatic rounds uh, uh, runs uh, of of, of Durko and also the state apparatus, including uh, the defense attaches uh, communicating with the South African National Defense Force and other security agencies within the country concerning this matter. So the U.S. U.S. ambassador apologized for that. However, he didn't apologize for the information that he shared, um, which also leads on to how, why the president has uh, appointed um, a, a judge, a retired judge, to convene an inquiry on actually what happened. And, and this is why, um, in, on engagements with the U.S. envoy, um, uh, the the the. The, the, the South African envoy to the USA, the US uh, side said that they will, would uh, provide evidence uh, at, the, at, at that inquiry. However, there was no guarantees that they would provide uh, uh, such evidence as, as, um, as indicated, depending on the terms of reference yeah. and the role the USA sees playing here. These, these things are still up in the air and will need further deliberation and events will unfold within the upcoming months concerning these matters. Uh, on, on, and, and and this will obviously impact the current deliberations on AGOA, um, at which, which in the next four to five five months, we should have a decision by the U.S. Congress on whether or not the, our, our our stay in AGOA, in AGOA will be extended as South Africa. But uh, the, the National Security Advisor, Sifi Mufamari, has already, already advised that there are plans to further engage, for further engagements with the U.S. counterparts, as both sides have found the relationship very, very uh, fruitful and strategic uh, to, um, uh, in, ter in terms of not only um, in Africa, but uh, geopolitically too. In view of what you've just echoed, I mean, we obviously also heard from President Sol Ramaphosa making a decision to establish a commission of inquiry into the alleged supply of weapons to Russia. It's, he's faced lots of uh, scrutiny. It's been criticized by many at this point as well. And I want in your opinion whether it was the right call to launch an investigation into this if there was nothing to hide from the beginning. How do we begin to also weigh up what's, what's tr uh, transpiring on that end? So there, there are a number of things to consider. The, the, the National Convention on Arms Control Committee has no records of South Africa transporting arms to Russia. Um, yes. But there, there, there are records of uh, communications uh, um, 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 mechanisms that were transported to Belarus, uh, antenna for Belarus uh, for, for industrial or military consumption. However, the, 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 there are other aspects that the, the needs clarity on. If there was, if the U.S. intelligence in this instance is indeed correct concerning that there was a shipment of arms, it turned, it, 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 then it means that there's a criminal um, industrial complex that's operating within South African naval bases, and therefore South African the South African National Defense Force, the naval commanders, along with the Ministry of Defense, along with with uh, um, um, our military military uh, in, in intelligence, will have to account on how this could happen on a na national key point, especially especially without the 
military knowledge of the South African government, undermining our national security and national interests within our ge the geopolitical sphere, and heads will have to roll. And that is mm. why there needs to be some form of investigation on what actually happened if the U.S. intelligence is true. Uh, but but fundamentally, the, the, the reason why an independent uh, judicial uh, panel uh, to, uh, uh, to, is to interrogate this is to also give assurance to our international partners in South Africa is taking this matter very seriously. As we have seen, this matter itself has been spread ar ar around the world in terms of international media, and, and, and a lot of commentary has been made along with our relationship with other uh, partners, such as the European Union, um, along with the UK, and, and other countries that we, that we have told that we are non-aligned with, um, and this undermining our foreign policy pronouncements of being a non-aligned actor. What is far, far more interesting is also how South Africa has now defined its non-aligned nature to becoming an active non-alignment, which now um, aligns South Africa's foreign policy interests with that, or that of Brazil. Transporting arms fundamentally undermines the, that uh, our argument presented mm. by the South African government. So the, this commission will be very interesting to see as it unwinds, and we hope that um, um, there will be a comprehensive report in which the public can engage with, and, they, uh, and so that we are the, the, the state, uh, state security apparatus is reaffirmed, um, uh, or, or, or we see the loopholes within our entire state security apparatus um, uh, system. No, absolutely. And Loazi, just um, as we conclude, in the interest of time, I mean, there's, this decision is obviously going to have knock-on effects. So when we assess the USSA relationship uh, with regards to, to AGOA and perhaps the impact it's also going to have on the Southern African region, how would you weigh in on that, given the different sectors that could be affected, agriculture, um, amongst many others, um, automobile, etc.? So, um, AGOA, in terms of money value, I know uh, uh, Professor Sigmund Mofumada does not just want to argue the money value. It's around 400 billion rand um, in terms of trade. However, that has knock-on impact, as, as Professor Mufamati has highlighted, on the rest of the Sadiq region. So uh, South Africa's national ports are the most um, are, are, um, industrialized in terms of processing imports of goods, and therefore our road and networks within the Southern African region provide and then South Africa as being a nexus point for in terms of transportation, logistics, and other international trade. And this will have knock-on impacts in terms of international trade within the Sadiq region, further undermining the notion of of regional integration and that has knock-on impacts within the east coast of Africa which South Africa also supplements uh, a lot of goods through the Durban port them and 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 fundamentally if if, if the, the USA um, uh, goal is to holding Russia accountable, this is not the means. And it will further destabilize the African continent, creating further problems for the USA further down the line. So in 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 in, in, in essence, um, when, when state actors have to consider um, uh, punitive actions against other states, they must look at the knock-on impacts that we have, especially for the yeah. Southern African region. And, and, and if, if, if the USA wants to evolve this um, uh, a, a sanctions regime upon Southern Africa, the relationship between the West and the Global South will be very much shattered. Loazi Somia, thank you very much for your time here on the SABC. Uh, Loazi Somia is an international relations analyst.